You can be just as competitive as any actuarial science grad and you won't risk not being able to get a job if you follow the advice that I'm going to give you in this video. Now, the majority of actuarial employers are looking for five things and I learned these five things in a study that I did on 100 entry-level actuarial jobs where I looked at 100 entry-level positions and determined the trends that employers were looking for. Now, the good thing is that you do not need an actuarial science degree to get these five things. It's kind of like driving a car to to your favorite vacation spot. Ah, vacation. You can forget about that for a while if you're going to be an actuary, says everyone but Bria. You can get there multiple different ways. Depending on the way you go, you might have to take different turns or make different pit stops than someone that has an actuarial science degree, but it's still possible for you and very achievable. So let's get into them. Okay, now let's talk about education. Now, in terms of your degree, you do not need an actuarial science degree, but something in math, statistics, finance, economics is really going to help you in terms of getting an actuarial job and being able to pass the actuarial exams, which I'll talk about next. Now, since you won't have an actuarial science degree, it's really important that you try to get courses that you would usually take when you're in an actuarial science program. So again, you're going to want to look at probability courses, statistic courses, math courses, anything financial, economics, those kind of things are really going to be valuable for you when it comes time for exams. But the, one of the really cool things about the actuarial career is that your degree does not matter. I have helped people get into actuarial positions that have degrees that are nowhere related to actuarial work. I've helped people get into actuarial jobs that have graduated years and years and years ago. So the degree really doesn't matter, but it is important that you do have some sort of bachelor's degree. That's what is the most important in terms of getting the job, not necessarily passing the exams. So let's move on to exams now. By the time you have graduated from school, you want to aim to have at least one to two exams passed. That is the ideal situation because most employers are not going to hire someone that has zero exams passed. So having at least one will prove that you are able to pass exams and it also proves to yourself that you're going to be able to do this. Now, of course, the courses that I mentioned earlier are going to help you in passing these exams, but there are also study materials that you can purchase that are very, very detailed and go into all the different types of concepts you'll need to know for any actuarial exam. They'll give you tons of practice questions too and practice exams. So even though you may not have all the same courses or all the same training or education as someone taking an actuarial science degree or program, you're still gonna have access to all the knowledge you need anyway by using these study materials. When do you study for exams? Well, that's easy. You just cram it all into all the free time you have, you know, between all that time you have to spend studying for school and then the time you are eating that food that barely resembles food. And then maybe after you blink once or twice, you can finally fit in your studying. Okay, on to your tech toolkit. Now, for actuarial students, it's really, really important that you learn how to use Microsoft Excel and you become a master at it. It is one of the most important things that you need to know because almost every actuarial job will require at least some use of Excel. It's also ideal if you know at least one programming language as well. There are multiple different programming languages that companies use in actuarial roles. So as long as you know one, it's going to be fairly easy for you to pick up on other ones. When you start to learn some something like Excel or a programming language, I recommend you first start with a course and then once you've taken that course, it's highly recommended that you go on and do some practice projects. Now, it can be really, really difficult to go from a course where you are basically following along exactly with what the instructor does and then going off on your own and having this idea of what you want to create in Excel and doing that yourself. It can take a lot of practice and it takes a lot of time to actually make those connections. So it's not something that you want to be doing when you get to your job. So when you have practice projects, it's going to first allow you to actually start doing that for yourself and being able to create things from scratch, but it's also going to be a great way to prove your skills to employers. If you don't have any projects that you can do, consider joining our Actuary Accelerator community where there's tons, actually I think there's about 10 now, different projects that you can do to help you practice Excel and programming language. These are things that you can add to your resume and they're going to help boost your qualifications. Even though they're just projects, they're not real world experiences. Now, after you've done some projects, then I recommend going out into the real world and using your Excel skills for good to accomplish something for a business. And that's going to prove even further that you can take your Excel skills and do something valuable for a business. That's what employers want, so prove that you can do it. And then that's gonna give you even better qualifications. And by the way, these projects 
do not have to be an actuarial context. If you join the AAC, the Actuary Accelerator community, they are in an actuarial context, but that does not have to be the case. By the way, if you have found this video helpful so far, could you please give it a thumbs up to let me know and also so that that YouTube algorithm spreads it to more future actuaries or others considering the actuarial career. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now let's talk about related experience and stepping stone positions. Stepping stone positions are basically some sort of experience or job that's going to give you relevant skills and knowledge that's going to be applicable to the actuarial career. This is things like using data, maybe using financial statements. Those kinds of things are really valuable to know how to use in the workplace. So if you have that sort of experience, even though it's not actuarial, it's still going to significantly help you in getting a job later. I have seen this work time and time again for the members of our actuary accelerator community. It means that you don't necessarily have to have an actuarial internship. Would that be great? Yes, absolutely. But this is a way to kind of bypass that requirement. Get related experience, learn Excel, pass exams. All these things are helping to build you up into a great candidate, even though you may not have an actuarial internship as well. Now, when you are looking for these stepping stone positions, it's really important to know that it doesn't have to be a full time job. It doesn't mean you necessarily have to quit what you're doing now to take on this new role. It can be part time. When I started my first stepping stone position, it was actually just on weekends for three or four hours a weekend. And that was what really helped me propel my career forward. I didn't go directly into an actuarial role after that, but it helped me get future jobs that were even more closely related to the actuarial field. So these can be part-time, they can be volunteer experience too. Oh, fantastic. I get to give away the last five minutes of free time that I've desperately been clinging on to, to work for free. Sounds fun. Okay, so many people underestimate the power of soft skills and in actuarial worlds in particular, communication skills are absolutely critical. This was one of the most highly requested skills when I did my 100 entry level actuarial job study. These types of skills are so important in actuarial roles because you're dealing with a lot of detailed information and you're also talking a lot to other people that are not actuarial minded. So you might be talking to people in the investments department, the legal department, the claims department. They have no idea what actuaries really do. So you have to be able to explain complex things in terms that other people can understand easily, even though they don't have your background. It's also important to be able to explain your work to other actuaries. So communication skills are vital. And there are many ways that you can develop develop those and I would actually say that some actuarial science programs don't even really develop these skills as well as they could but things that you can do in particular are to consistently practice these things so even in your day-to-day -day life or in your stepping stone positions make sure you're always answering emails professionally make sure you're taking phone calls professionally make sure you're doing any presentations professionally and practice these skills on an ongoing basis so that they come naturally to you and you also get time to practice them before they really matter you can also look for speaking opportunities in your classes take those very seriously and do the best you can and you might even consider joining speaking groups like Toastmasters for example communication skills are honestly one of the things that always scared me specifically presentation skills because I hated being in front of people and talking to them and having people's eyes on me but one of the things that really really helped me was creating YouTube videos like this where I was forced to be in front of a camera continue talking even if I felt like I was gonna mess up I had to kind of fix my words so that I could keep going and not start over a hundred times, that kind of gave me the confidence to be able to just keep going and go with the flow and just keep speaking. And that's something that you're going to have to do in your actuarial role as well. This is something that you could do too. You don't have to post it on YouTube, but just practice talking to a camera and then you can at least watch it back and see, oh, I did something a little funky right there. Maybe I should do this differently next time. Or I was stumbling over my words. Maybe I have to really continue to practice this so that I can flow better, even though I didn't know exactly what I was going to say in the moment. That was a big thing for me. I was scared to mess up because I didn't have extreme confidence that I could just keep talking about a certain topic. And even though that does still come to me occasionally, I can still keep going. And that only happened because of creating these YouTube videos. So you can try something similar. Now, there are also a bunch of other things that you can do that aren't necessarily going to help your formal qualifications, but they are going to help to open doors up for you in the future and overall make you a more appealing candidate. So let's start first with an actuarial science club. 
Now, even though your school may not have an actuarial science program, it may have an actuarial science club. And if it doesn't, this would be an amazing opportunity for you to start one. Leadership skills are something that actuarial employers would love to see. So the fact that you would maybe start up an actuarial science club in your school could be a good selling point for you. If your school does already have it, just know that you don't necessarily have to be an actuarial science student in order to get into the club. So you could check out their rules and see if you can get in despite not being in the program. Another thing I recommend is to keep up to date with all the hot topics going on in the actuarial career right now. Climate change, for instance, is a big one and I have a video about that if you're interested. I'll link it right down below and up here. Um, but there are other things too, and also just knowing actuarial terms and concepts is great. In the Actuary Accelerator community, if you're in there, there's a whole section on terminology that it would be ideal for you to know as an up and coming actuary. Another thing to do is keep in mind that internships are not always posted through the school and you don't necessarily have to be an actuarial science candidate or you don't necessarily have to be an actuarial science student to get actuarial jobs. So keep an eye on insurance companies' careers pages. They often post internships there and you can apply even though you're not in an actuarial science school or an actuarial science program. The two other things I wanted to say here are networking because that's a big one. I see so many future actuaries get into actuarial jobs because of their network. Networking does not mean that you have to necessarily connect only with actuaries. There's so much more you can do in between you and the actuaries in order to get yourself seen. So don't underestimate the power of that because it could really, really be a way for you to get in despite not having the actuarial science degree. And your resume is the last thing I wanted to mention. Your resume can make or break your career. So no matter what, when you get to the stage where you are creating a resume and putting it out there, you want to make sure that you have done everything you possibly can to make sure it is the best it can possibly be and 100% completely geared towards actuarial positions. If you want help with that, check out the actuary accelerator community because there's lots of resources in there on that and we also do boost your future sessions where I give live feedback to our members on their resumes. So is the ideal situation to be in an actuarial science program? I guess you could say so, but it really isn't going to disadvantage you much by not being in the program. There's so much you can do to overcome that and our top candidate method that we teach in the Actuary Accelerator community and that I teach on this channel a whole bunch is really designed to help people like you achieve this goal of becoming an actuary even you're even though you're not in an actuarial science program there are many people that think that you're only going to be able to be competitive in the actuarial field if you have that actuarial science degree and that is not the case so if you want step-by-step -step guidance advice and support in making this happen please check out the actuary accelerator community where you can get access to me along with other actuarial mentors and a full community of other future actuaries that are doing this at the exact same time as you plus tons of help with your resume passing exams gaining those technical skills and doing projects networking all that stuff is all in the AAC I'll leave a link to it right down below in the description and I hope you'll check it out thank you to all of you that have stayed to the end of today's video now it's time to get to know me a little bit better I have not hit any more raccoons by the way if you are wondering if you watched my last video you'll know all about that but um, the reason for that is because of this. Now this looks like an innocent little block, but it's not. You see that? Yeah, this is a wooden brain teaser puzzle. And I've been trapped all weekend trying to solve this puzzle and it is not going very well. It is one of the most frustrating things I have ever tried to do. I've tried it time and time and time again. It is so easy to pull it apart, but getting it back together is well, a lot more difficult and I really just want to throw it out the window, but my brain will not let me do that because it just has to solve it. So that's the problem I'm running into right now. Now, eventually I'm going to solve this silly little puzzle. I'm going to solve it and I want to do another one. So if you have ever done anything like this or have some sort of recommendation on a different puzzle I should try, I always like to keep a few puzzles going. Uh, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear what kinds of puzzles you've been doing or ones that you think I should try. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.